Replacing the engine coolant in an 07 Ford Ranger that has a 2.3 liter four cylinder engine and automatic transmission. 2.3 liter engine, automatic transmission, I need 10.2 quarts or 9.7 liters if you own the metric system. So knowing that, I have one gallon of coolant concentrate, I have one gallon of distilled water. When I mix those two together, that will give me eight quarts of coolant at a 50-50 ratio. And in this bottle, I have 2.2 quarts that has already been mixed 50-50. And the reason for the 50-50 mix is is this sticker underneath the hood right in the front of the engine compartment showing 50% water, 50% coolant. They actually show tap water. I'm not using tap water because tap water has minerals. I'm using distilled water, which has those minerals removed. On my 07, the petcock or the drain is located at the base of the radiator on the left corner as you're looking at it from the front. So straight down from here, that's where we're headed. All right, underneath the truck, not sure if yours is gonna look like mine, but there is a plastic box, a protective box that protects the bottom of the radiator and the valve we need to get to, the petcock, is right here my finger is on it and I can get a 19 millimeter socket on that valve so I could just turn it and open it now and the coolant would drain out somewhere through the bottom of the box what I'm gonna do is cut this flap off just to get it out of the way I'm also gonna drill a hole through the bottom I'm gonna put a piece of clear tubing slide that onto the bottom of the drain valve so that when I open up that pet cock the coolant will drain out through the tube into the catch pan these are 10 snips So now this clear tubing is going to go up through the hole and connect to the little nipple on the bottom of the drain valve and I will come back and show you that completed when it's done. All right, I got it, but I wound up having to use a much larger hose than what I had anticipated. The inside diameter on the hose that I used is about three eighths of an inch, but you can see it's connected to the nipple at the bottom of the drain valve or the petcock. 19 millimeter fits around the outside or it's recessed for an eight millimeter Allen wrench. So now with the drain hose installed, I can loosen the petcock and the coolant will flow out through the hose. Now I'm gonna take the cap off the coolant reservoir tank in the engine compartment. That'll help it drain out faster. About 20 minutes later, we're down to a slow drip. So let's measure this out and see how close to 10.2 quarts we are. And right where that black mark is, that is 10 quarts. So we should be right around there. We are just above the nine quart mark, meaning there's a quart still in the engine somewhere and it's probably in the heater core. So let's drain that. This is back left corner of the engine compartment. These two hoses that go back through the firewall, this is where coolant is circulated through the heater core and that's what provides heat to heat the inside of your cab. When I drain the radiator, the coolant that is trapped in the heater core, it did not drain out because of the angle of these hoses. So what I'm gonna do is take these two clamps loose at this end and force air through the hoses to force force the water or force the coolant out of the heater core. It didn't slide up very much. See if I have better luck with this one. They've been on there for 16 years. This one's gotta go up a little bit higher. Got a different pair of pliers. and that worked. Let me pry these hoses up. So the problem with trying to break these hoses loose is that the valve that they're attached to is loose, so I can't get a lot of leverage. Come on, baby. Got a plastic jug and one of the hoses going into that jug. This is the hose on the left. For the other hose, I have a section of plastic tubing that has an outside diameter of three quarters of an inch. That fits tightly inside of the heater hose. So I'm gonna force that in as far as I can go. Then I'm gonna blow into the other end of this tube and that will force the coolant that's in the heater core into this jug. I'm going to reverse it just to blow in the other direction through the heater core. Got a little bit more, but not much. Let's pour this in a bucket and see what it brings us up to. Probably nine and three quarters of a quart, which leaves about half a quart of coolant in the engine. I want to flush out the heater core. So I have a gallon of distilled water. I'm going to fill up that heater core until the water starts running out into the jug. Then I'll take the funnel out, blow through. And a heater core is full. You can see water running into the jug. So I'm gonna stop right there, blow through the hose. I'll set it up and reverse it, flow water through the heater core in the opposite direction. Before I do that second flush, this is what we got out of the first flush. So not completely clear water, a little bit of a tint to it, but not too bad. 
and that water is clear so that's the last flush i'm going to do on the heater core i got the catch pan cleaned out i'm going to slide that back underneath the radiator then i'm going to pour a couple of gallons of distilled water into the reservoir that'll run down through the radiator drain out through the bottom then we'll check to see how clear that is the reason I'm pouring water through the reservoir is because my radiator does not have a radiator cap, not on this model. And again, it's an 07. I don't know if you can see it, but the water is bubbling because it's fighting for air. And that water is slowly making its way through the engine, through the radiator, and into the drain pan. We're down to a slow drip, so I'm going to get that pet cock tightened back up. But I do not want to over tighten it because it's made out of plastic. And it would be very easy to either strip out or break. Let's see if we got that whole gallon back. I spilled a little bit on the floor. You can see right there. So if that was in the jug, we would have gotten back the whole gallon. And you can see it has a little bit of a tint from the coolant. So doing this flush with that one gallon was worth it. Got a little bit of that old coolant out. I'm going to run one more gallon through same way. That second gallon has finished draining. All right, right to the top. So we got that whole gallon back out. And you can see the difference in color. This is the gallon from the first flush, and this is the second, obviously. So much cleaner in the engine. The heater core is also clean. It's time to put new coolant in. I'm going to pour the straight coolant in first. What I'm going to do is crank up the truck. The water pump's going to kick in. It's going to draw all that coolant into the engine. Then I'll come back around here real quickly and pour the gallon of water in, and then we'll go from there. Been idling for about 25 minutes. We have reached normal operating temperature, and I also have the heater turned on. I have it to high heat and high fan. So I'm gonna go back around, and check the level in the coolant tank. We are just below the add mark. And I do not see any bubbles in the reservoir, so I think all the air has worked its way out of the engine. So I'm gonna shut the engine off, add a little coolant up to that top line, and we should be good. And with the heater, plenty of hot air coming out of the vents. I'll keep an eye on it over the next few days as I drive the truck, and I'll probably have to come back in and add a little bit more. Checking for leaks, the hoses that I disconnected go into the heater core through the firewall, and they are dry, so we're good here. Underneath, we're dry as well, and putting in that drain tube, you don't have to do that at all. All you have to do is loosen the petcock, and that coolant's going to find a way out through one of these holes in the box. Or, there are 13 millimeter bolts and one plastic clip on each side. It's just like this. Take those down. You can take the box out if you want to do it that way. So, here Here's the progression. This is the old coolant that we drained out originally. This is the first flush, second flush. That's what we added. And as far as the change intervals, the first mention in the maintenance guide is at 100,000 miles or six years, whichever comes first. And then after that initial change, every three years or 50,000 miles. 